In 1922, a radio transmitter powers up ready to make history. Nearby sits Arthur Burroughs, and with the words... Do hello, Marconi House, London, calling. Burroughs announces the arrival of the BBC. The age of British broadcasting has truly begun. Wait a minute, how did this moment ever happen? To start a radio station, you need people to have radios. But who has a radio before there's a radio station? High above the mud of Flanders in 1918 float disembodied voices. The First World War is the crucible for a new technology, sending speech by radio. When the fighting is done, a small but loyal army of enthusiasts comes home. They're a new breed, radio hams, a kind of virtual community scattered across the country, in living rooms, garden sheds, anywhere they can get a signal with their homemade sets. Then the Marconi company gets involved. At the heart of their team is the irrepressible Peter Eckersley. He soon tires of sending repetitive test signals to see how far they go and starts livening things up a bit, telling jokes, singing songs. The hams love it. But the post office, who control the airwaves, aren't amused by such frivolous content interfering with more serious uses. In 1920, they ban the station. After a barrage of complaints, the post office is forced to relent, but on one condition. Radio needs to be regulated. They bring electrical firms together to create a new entity, the British Broadcasting Company. They alone are granted the right to broadcast radio to the masses. They'll be powered by Britain's biggest transmitter yet, 2LO, an enormous jumble of valves and wires that takes up an entire room. And on a foggy night in 1922, 2LO comes to life. With 1.5 kilowatts of power, it can throw the voice of Arthur Burroughs right across London. Soon, his voice is joined by others in a medley of news, weather, and even music. And it's not just hams tuning in. Young and old, male and female, rich and poor, radios span the social spectrum, fast becoming must-have household goods. And so it is that the hobby of a few enthusiasts is standardised and nationalised. When the next World War comes around, it's announced to the nation on BBC Radio and heard by nine million listeners. And that's how the information age came into the home.